everyone. Good evening. Okay, so uh, today uh, we'll see an example in which uh, we will use the feature of uh, WCF called data contract and using that uh, we will build an application which will fetch the data from the database and send it to the client and for example the data would be say product then uh, or suppose here for our application the data is suppose employee data then if you are sending the employee data as the primary data like employee id name designation or suppose uh, uh, their contact number instead of sending the data in the primitive form we can also send the entire employee object to the client for that we need to use the data contract so uh, we will use this feature to communicate this uh, employee data between uh, client and service using data contract and additionally uh, we will uh, store this data into the database and fetch the data from the database so uh, that will also learn secondly uh, we'll also learn how to uh, host the web service in the different environment in console based application so in the previous lecture, we have seen how to host our WCF service uh, in Windows form based application. In today's lecture, we'll learn how to host our WCF service inside the console application. Secondly, uh, in the previous lecture, we have seen how to uh, set up the service environment, create the service, creating endpoints programmatically. So writing a code for that. So in the Windows form based application, what we did, we uh, during the form load event, we created the service, we created the uh, service host and within, within that we created a service instance and then we created the service endpoint and uh, we, uh, we can create the business endpoint, we can create the max endpoint and so forth. Now we'll see that how to do that using the configuration file instead of uh, writing the code. And that approach you already know because you already seen the app.config file inside that how to write down this thing. Normally, we when we do add service reference, this app.config file is automatically generated on the client side. But to set it up on the host side, we will see that. And finally, we will build a Windows form based client which will consume this service as the data. So, uh, is this clear what we are going to learn? The three main parts, the service, host, and the client. And the WCA service will use the data contract. Our hosting, we will use the mixed approach of uh, setting up the service. So, some of the configuration, we will do it in the configuration file, app.config, and uh, then creating service host, we will do it programmatically. And setting up base address will do it programmatically. And finally, designing the Windows Form based application to consume the service. So, fine. so let me begin with the application example. Uh, in between, if you have any doubt, just you can unmute yourself and uh, you can ask the question, right? So, okay.
Okay. Hope that my screen is visible to you, right? So, first of all, we'll uh, directly use the uh, template WCF service library. Give the name like employee library so that we can identify that this is the uh, my service. Okay, let me just zoom in. So, if you have any doubt in between, just uh, unmute yourself and then ask. Uh, okay. Then, uh, what we have to do, we have to, uh, by default, it will create the default interface and the default uh, service one class, which will implement that interface. So, we'll, we will deliver them. Okay. We will create our own interface from scratch. So you can add an item to the project, select the item type to the interface, and the name given is uh, I am service. Now this is the interface. So this is my service contract, basically. You can see over here that it contains two operations, get employees and get employee. And both of them are annotated with attributes, operation contract. And the interface itself is annotated with the service contract. And remember that interface is public, OK? Because I want to make it public so that it is accessible to the client. OK, we are keeping an interface public. Now, uh, here, uh, there it looks like an error for the employee. Why? It shows an error, the curvy line under this uh, employee employee class. Why is it so? Any idea? Okay, so uh, because we have not uh, defined this employee class so far, and that's why it shows uh, 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 this Visual Studio consider it as an error. Right? So you can see that get employee returns data set. So here the idea is this data set is consisting of all the employee records, and this get employee method will take the integer parameter, which is assumed to be the ID of an employee, and it should return the information or details of that particular employee inside the employee object. So hope that this is clear. These two methods, get, get employees and get employee. OK. Now we will create a new class employee which will implement that interface okay this is uh, the uh, this is the model okay so this is the data contract because i want to have this employee okay i want to have this employee for that create a class employee and we annotate this employee class with the uh, attribute data contract and there are three fields id name and la first name last name employee id first name last name and properties are employee ID, first name, and last name. So, and then we have the get set methods. So, uh, mainly we'll see that additionally what we are doing this data contract. And uh, because we are doing data contract, we need to uh, have this assembly system dot runtime dot serialization. Okay, then only data contract is supported, right? So, include or use that uh, related. Uh, assembly for using the data contract which is system dot runtime dot serialization so there are uh, to keep the example short uh, i am using only three fields id name and first name and last name 
and all the three fields all these three properties are annotated with the data member attribute that means uh, i want to send this employee object from client to service and vice versa so that the serialization class because it is annotated with the data contract it will handle converting this employee object to the xml and from xml to employee object so that that's why we require this serialization class right so it will be automatically handled we need not worry about it then we'll create an employee service class which will implement our i employee service interface okay so this will create a uh, template for the employee service class now uh, in between what we'll do we'll uh, create a database so i am using the sql server database add new database give the name of the database say northwind and you can save it into the appropriate location of your file system then we are adding a table to the database employee okay so employee table and there are three fields id first name last name employee id first name and last name with the data type integer and where care respectively right so and we are also making the employee id as the primary key okay so there cannot be duplication in the id of the employee and then you can from the uh, visual studio instant itself you can enter the data you can right click on your, your table employees table and then from the uh, context menu you can select the view data and you can enter few data of uh, say employee say five records are inserted okay and uh, because now i want to refer to this database in my code i need to refer to the connection string okay so to access the database we require connection string so select the database right click on it and select the properties and from then from that properties select the connection string and copy it because it would be required to make the connection to the database so i know that i uh, you know all these steps but again i am just uh, quickly uh, go through these steps to create a database enter some data and then uh, we'll use it in our code to establish the connection and to fetch the data afterwards okay now uh, we have created this employee service class which will implement this i employee service so two operations are to be implemented get employees and get employees so the first one is uh, this one yeah okay so so you can see the first method is uh, get employee so i hope that you know this approach of uh, fetching the data using sql data adapter wherein you provide the first parameter is your uh, sql so select a, a employee id first name last name from the employees table and the second parameter is the connection string so we simply copy paste that connection string that we have uh, just created for the employees database and now uh, we can create an instance of new data set and using sql data adapter uh, the fill method we can fill the data set with the employees records okay so <clears throat> we can so uh, it will fill up uh, my data set with all the employee records which are available in my sql data adapter 
and then finally return the data set because the return type of this uh, method is data set so uh, this is the implementation for my method get employees which returns the data set okay so uh, any doubt so far okay just a minute okay there is a question no uh, what if we don't have mention employee id in our xml is it feasible we are not uh, creating xml file uh, uh, it will be automatically generated by this uh, wc framework whenever it encounters the uh, 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 this data contract uh, the id it will convert it to the xml and if you are not providing it uh, the exception will be thrown exception will be thrown if you try to insert the record then exception will be thrown so see that for that exception handling code should be written by yourself okay because we have to handle these errors otherwise uh, at run time and uh, exception will be thrown so see that in most of the example i have avoided this exception handling code but you should write it okay it is mandatory because uh, otherwise uh, the application will crash and you will not know what is the issue okay so many of the code i have written without try catch block to reduce the size of the code uh, and to not to clutter the code with the exception path so if you follow this slide definitely uh, because if you if you have some mistake suppose the data connect database connection is not established or there is a typing mistake in the table name or field name you won't be able to get the data exception will be thrown and uh, to avoid that you should handle it uh, through the try catch block okay so just a minute so uh, hope that this uh, code is uh, simple you must have uh, used it in the dotnet subject fetching the data using the sql data adapter class and use of the data set uh, collection okay uh, next method is uh, get employee okay here you will see that uh, i want to fetch the employee record with the matching id okay so suppose i am using sql connection again the parameter of the constructor is the connection string so simply copy paste that uh, connection string and uh, create the sql command and uh, using the sql command we can specify our sql query but now we are using the parameterized query so that's why we are using sql parameter object and uh, we want to fetch the employee record from the employees table where the employee id matches with the given id okay so using sql parameter you can have the parameterized query and we are passing that as the parameter sex parameters collection of the sql command and then uh, we are establishing a connection using the connection sql connection object open method then uh, we can uh, get the data in the reader object using uh, command dot execute reader okay so command dot execute reader method will actually fire the query 
and it will return this collection of records or rows in the reader object sql data reader object and we can go through the read method and see that if the if there are any records then read method would be successful if the read method is successful on the sql reader sql data reader object then we can uh, copy this uh, id first name last name into the employee object so see that employee object we are creating an instance of the employee object and we are setting its uh, properties id name and first name and last name finally closing the reader and closing the connection again uh, you will see the code that i am uh, what will happen if the there is no employee with the matching id can you tell me what will happen if the employee with the given id doesn't exist in my database what will happen will it throw an exception okay sail is saying exception what about others what do you think correct it, actually it will not enter the while loop at all because see the data there is no matching record and that's why the reader dot read will be false first time itself and the while loop will be skipped and it will directly close the reader and then connection will be closed and what will be written the employee object which is the empty object so that object will have some default values okay that object will have some default values okay so exception will not be thrown correct okay it will not be thrown because the while loop is not uh, entered again uh, see that what if uh, multiple uh, records are match do Uh, we are giving the id employee id as the primary key but suppose employee id is not the primary key and we have multiple matching records what will happen for this code what will be the return value uh, return object from the get employee are you getting my question okay uh, sail is uh, saying that first instance of the record out of suppose five records matches with the given id then first instance will be written to see that uh, okay how many time while loop will be executed one time or five times suppose five record matches so even if there are five records still it will be executed uh, once only do you think so okay i am telling you that uh, suppose the employee id is not the primary key and there are suppose i am searching for an employee with the id 5 and there are five records with the id 5 so this sql data reader will contain one record or five records
yeah i am telling you that is uh, uh, id is not primary key it is not unique and there are uh, uh, suppose uh, the there are five records with the id 5 in my database In current database, it will not occur because uh, we have set up the employee ID to be the primary key. But in case if it is not primary key and the user is entering, say, five employee record with the ID 5, this code should return all the basically this uh, query select um, uh, employee ID, first name, last name from employees, where employee ID equal to 5 will actually return all the file records when we execute the command using the execute reader yeah so it should this loop will iterate five times okay and it will return the last matched employee correct correct it is it will print the last record so it will not be the first record but it will be the last matching employee record clear so this is just uh, we are going through whether you understood the code or not so now i hope that this is clear okay so rather uh, but it uh, this will not happen because we are uh, employee id is primary key set already set up and uh, there will be only one record while loop will uh, iterate only once and then this reader will close. So again, I am not checking for error condition. What if no records are found and so forth? So otherwise, I should explicitly return null in that case. Okay. What should I do? Uh, usually, I if the uh, here in a, this typical case, we should return null if uh, the record is not found. And on the client side, we should check before displaying the value. If the value is null, then do not render the value. So this is the usual logic for any of the application. Or we can say convention. So the client will expe uh, expect null if the no records found. Otherwise, they will expect the employee record itself. OK, fine. So let us uh, finally, we have uh, built the service side. We have the interface with two methods and the implementation. Both the methods are uh, establishing the connection with the database and employee table, employees table, fetching the data and returning the data set or employee record, depending upon which method we are invoking. Now, the second step is to build the host. Now, we are instead of the Windows form based application, we will, we are uh, deep, we are hosting our web service inside the console application. So, now we'll create a new project within the same solution explorer, or you can create it in a, in a separate Visual Studio instance. Uh, so, select the project type to be the console application and give the appropriate name. Then uh, I need to create, I need to set up the service environment. So within this host, I am including this assembly system.service model. Okay, so in between, Sally is saying that we can check by Hasro. So yeah, see that. To keep the code simple, I have not done exception handling and I am assuming that everything goes fine. But otherwise, it is not a robust code actually. The robust code should handle all the possible scenarios. Okay, like uh, checking for uh, not found situation or multiple, uh, if the multiple records are found and so forth. Again, you can change as per, uh, you know, the coding parts and database parts so very well. Then you can uh, rightly code it. Instead of uh, this slide code, you can modify the code to make it more robust. So in uh, my console host application, I'm including this system.service model assembly. Then it should refer to the DLL file, employee service dll file okay so screen is not visible okay let me reset it 
Okay, now I think it is visible. Yeah. So system dot service model, and then we will also ref refer this employee library dot dll file. Now see that uh, on the host we will create this app dot config file, and within this app dot config file we will be setting up the service endpoints through, uh, through configuration. So we are creating a service with the name employee service. There are there is also there are two main sections services section and behavior section, and within the service section there are two endpoints defined. one endpoint that uses tcp binding another endpoint that uses http binding and both of them use the i employee service as the interface as the contract and address is employee service so uh, what is missing in this app.config file can anyone identify what is missing in this file in this configuration of services correct correctly identified it is a base address okay because base address is not provided so right you rightly pointed out the missing part the base address is missing anything else correct that is also correct observation max endpoint is not provided how many endpoints are there in this config file two and both of them are communication endpoint or max endpoint yeah both of them are communication endpoint but sometime also call as the business endpoint okay so there is no max endpoint so how the client will be able to download this uh, metadata if you have not provided max endpoint is it possible or not so that's where this behavior section come into the picture you will see that in behavior section we have set service metadata http get enabled equal to true that means using the http protocol using http get request we can download the metadata and metadata here it is nothing but visual file so we we'll look at that okay and what is missing the base addresses are missing that we will provide it programmatically by writing code we will create the base addresses and there are two two endpoints one over http another over tcp so we need to provide two base addresses right
okay so this is my uh, main main function so it, because it is a console application it begins with the main function and within the main function we are creating two base addresses one is tcp another is http and we create the service host instance and inside that we provide the type of employee service and two base addresses because there are two different endpoint that uses which uses different scheme or scheme, uh, different transport mechanism and that's why we require two different base addresses we cannot have a single base address which is applicable for both the endpoint the reason is because both of them are communicating over two different transport mechanism so see that what we are doing we are configuring the service partly through the config file and partly through the code so this is a combination of both the approaches then finally create a uh, create service instance of uh, service host instance and then host dot open and then on the console you can write down that the service is published and then it is waiting for some keyboard input whenever it will get some input it will close the host application it will also terminate the service hope that this is clear okay so run this console application then it will display a message in the con onto the console that published and then after uh, running our host we can go to the browser and within the browser you can type in this base address when you type in the base address it will show you this message that uh, you, you can download the visual file through this url so if we uh, see that how to download the url how to download this uh, visual okay see that is it readable url is readable in this screen just let me know is the url readable to download this file okay fine thank you so uh, you can see that uh, this is the standard way for downloading the visual file because we have in the config file we have configured that we can download the metadata through the http get so that's why http okay so within the browser the entire visual file would be visible so you can just uh, i'm skipping through this part you can see the various part of the visual file and you can see the base address service endpoint the operations their parameters everything would be mentioned inside the visual file now the third step is to uh, develop the form client so create a new project of type windows forms based application give the appropriate name say employee client then you keep the service running and you can right click on the project you through the context menu you add service reference and you paste the basic url so right now we are using the http protocol to download the metadata see that we have not provided the max endpoint okay so this is my base address that is working over the http protocol only I cannot download the metadata using any other protocol so you can download it and uh, you can add the service reference it, it will automatically create the app.config file on the client side and now uh, this is the uh, form design so we have one label called select employee there is a list box in the list box we'll fetch all the employee records and we'll display the names of the employee records all the employees say first name of all the employees so we will uh, fill up this list box with uh, first name of all the employees and the, if the user uh, selects one of the employee name from this list box automatically 
that employee's details will be fetched from the service and it will be displayed on the right hand side the detail of that employee id first name last name okay so there are six labels corresponding to the id name and first name and last name and their values so this is the form design and now we need to code it the idea is to populate this list box with all the employee records first name we need to invoke the get employees method and when the user selects one of the employee from this list box we need to invoke the get employee method with the id of that employee okay so uh, this is the design when we uh, double click on the form form load event what we'll do we will create the service client object now here it is written as proxy object and proxy dot get employees will return the data set this data set will contain all these employee records so i hope that you know the data source and this properties of list box we can bind the data set to this list box yes or no okay fine thank you so here you can see that uh, data source is bound with the uh, data sets tables default view and there are two properties display member and value member so display member is first name so to the user first name will be displayed but when we select the one of the row of the list box internally we will be able to fetch the id employee id of the that employee and finally proxy dot close because now when the application begins the list box will be populated with the first names of all the employees is uh, is this code clear or any doubt this is database code and fetching the data uh, binding the list box data source with the data sets tables and then setting up the property display member and value member and we know that uh, this data set will contain the employee records employee id first name last name okay and uh, now yes uh, here you can see that uh, if you select the uh, list box first of all select the list box in the design view then uh, using f4 uh, keyboard key you can uh, f4 function key on the keyboard you can select the property of the uh, list box and there is a lightning icon okay if you click on the lightning icon it will display you all the events on which you can write down the event handler so there is a click event you can double click it it will automatically generate the event handler for the list box with the name this box once underscore click so you do this and it will this template will be generated don't write this code yourself don't write down something like that private void list uh, private void list box one underscore click don't write it manually you follow this procedure you select the list box property go to the click action double click it it will automatically generate this event handler code basically internally it is registering the event handler okay and if you manually do it it will not occur so now what we what we want to do uh, based on the selected employee id we need to fetch the employee record using the get employee method so through the proxy object we can invoke the get employee method and get employee method what is the return type of get employee method what is the return value of get employee method correct employee so that's why we'll see the type we are having service reference one dot employee okay so we are creating because this employee type exist on the service side it doesn't exist on the client side if you remember that we created the data contract for employee on the service side neither in the host nor in the client 
so that's why we can get that data type using the service reference one okay and then we are invoking the get employee method and appropriate type conversions are done we are getting the value from the list box one dot selected value property and then when we get that employee uh, object we can uh, get the property id name and last name assign it to the labels text value any doubt in this slide because this is now the usual code uh, dealing with this uh, list box properties and invoking the service method get employee passing the appropriate parameter taking the value in the employee object as an assigning value to the labels again you will see that error handling code is not written okay this is not the robust code because it is not handling the error what if the employee object is not okay so those things are not handled to keep the code stable in but uh, when you are uh, testing it you need to write down the error handling code so that you will identify where is the problem finally with the client we are running the client you will see the will uh, when the client is run at that time it will populate the list box with all the employee records first name and uh, if we click on one of the uh, first name it automatically display its details like id name first name last name right inside similarly if we click on say another employee first name it will display its detail on the right hand side so uh, this is very uh, simple application but uh, they will explain you all these different aspect of service starting with the data co contract hosting hosting in a console based application configuring the host through the config file configuring the host programmatically by writing code how to use the mix approach of uh, developing or uh, setting up the web service how to provide the different endpoints how to provide the base addresses so just to uh, for illustration purposes uh, all this combination has been tried out either you can configure the service on the host programmatically or through configuration file or using both the approach or mix approach so endpoints are written in config file but the base addresses are written in the code likewise uh, finally consuming the web service uh, in the client application okay fine so question uh, question answer time any question in this slide or any other question today's lecture any other uh, topic so far all this lecture slide has been uploaded in the google classroom and uh, you can refer it and uh, mainly you try it out okay the idea is you try it out yourself and uh, see that it is working or not because uh, the examples are taken uh, such a way they are as simple as possible so the so that uh, with the uh, with less time you can develop it okay fine so uh, no question all the best for the uh, first sessional exams